Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be creating our first few GLSL shaders to sort of test out our shader classes and give you a bit of a feel for GLSL. So, with that out of the way, I'm going to go to my folder for the 3D game engine. This is where all my source code is stored right now. And I'm going to create a new folder for res, and in here, these are going to be all my resource files eventually, but right now all I care about is the one for shaders, so shaders. And I'm going to start creating a pretty basic shader program. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to create new text document. I'm going to call it, I'll call it, oh, basic vertex dot. And you might be wondering, well, what's the file extension for GLSL shaders? And well, in case you didn't know, that's the programming language that all shaders are written. They're written in GLSL. And the answer is, there is no agreed-upon naming convention. So you can essentially use a fi any file extension you want. I'm going to be using VS, GS, and FS, respectively, for vertex shader, geometry shader, and fragment shader. But you can use any file extension you care to use. So basicvertex.vs. And I'm going to go ahead and in here, Notepad++, it's my preferred editor, I'm going to set my language to GLSL, and I'm going to start coding. So if you've never written a program in GLSL before, it's a lot like writing a program in C. So if you're familiar with C, you shouldn't have too much trouble with it. But I'm going to go over anyways. First thing you want to do in any GLSL program is type pound, number sign, hashtag, whatever you want to call it, and version. This will tell GLSL which version of OpenGL this shader program is intended for. And in our case, I'm intending these programs for version 3.3.0. So, 3.3.0. So, with that, I can start actually writing the code. First thing I want to do is I want to access all this individual vertex data that I'm sending to GLSL. So, as you see, I'm doing this vertex attrib pointer. It's sending all the vertex data, giving it a nice layout for how it's sending it in. How do I access that in GLSL? Well, here's how you do it. You do the layout keyword, and then, you, in parentheses, you do location equals zero. And that tells it which particular attrib array to look in. In this case, I'm looking for the position data, which is in attrib array zero. So, I'm doing location zero. Then you do n to tell GLSL it's an input, and then you can t say data type you want to store it in, and variable name. So other than after this, it's just like declaring a normal variable. I'm going to store it in a vector 3, because that makes the most sense to me for storing a position. And I'm going to call it position. And that is how you take in data from, well, right here, in data you're putting in from the vertex attribute array. Now, every individual vertex is going to be stored in this position variable. So, now that I have all the data I'm really interested in getting, I can go ahead and write the code portion. So, the way you start, where the code starts is at a void main function, just like any normal C or C++ program. Well, yeah. And, here you can do pretty much anything you want. The only real I guess semi-requirement that there is, is at the end you want to set this variable GL position because this is ultimately going to be the finalized position that you're outputting out of this. So I can set this to, you might think you can just set it straight to the position, but something that's interesting is this is actually a, f a vector 4, not a vector 3, so you might that might throw a few people off. I'll talk more about that when I get to dealing with perspective calculations, but for now, just whenever you have a position, set the fourth component to 1. And just use that as the rule of thumb until I get to there, because that's it's a little interesting as to why that fourth component's there. But yeah, this right here is pretty much the minimal vertex shader program. It just takes in the position and sets the final position to whatever position you passed in. If you want, you can actually do some interesting things here. Like, for example, I can take the position, and I can multiply it by something. So, let's see, I want to multiply it by, oh, I don't know, 0 0.25. Why not? So if I multiply the entire position by 0 0.25, then 
in theory, that should actually just take the whole thing and scale it in towards the middle. I don't know, I'm actually just going on the fly here, so... I don't know, we'll see what happens. Maybe it won't do anything and I'll have to change it, but... <laughs> who knows? So yeah, that's just a basic vertex shader program. So next I want to go ahead and create a fragment shader, because, you know, got something to do with vertex, might as well add something to do the, the fragment as well. So, basic fragment dot... And in my name convention, I'll call it FS for a fragment shader. And I'll just go ahead and drag it into here. So, first off, just like with a vertex shader, to the version and set it. Oh, well, first off, set the language to GLSL for this index height lighting. And then the version is 330. Something that's interesting in the fragment shader compared to the vertex shader is. You see how in the vertex shader, GLSL sort of has this predefined GL position variable that you can set your final position output to? In the fragment shader, you don't have to do that. You, you can go ahead and just create your own output variable. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to create some out. It, out for indicating it's going to be an output. I'm going to be call it vector3. And, well, as a type of vector3, and I'm going to call it frag color. And here, I'm going to create the main function. And you can do pretty much anything you want. You can create your own vector 4. And if, wait, vector 4, because there's four dimensional output, RGB and alpha. And I'm going to say it's some vector 4. And I'm going to set it to cyan, because I like the color cyan. So 0, 0.0, 1.1, 0.0, 1.0, and 1.0 for the alpha value. And there. So those are my basic vertex and fragment shaders. Now all I have to do is go to my game class and actually load this data in and use it. So let's create a private shader, shader. And in my constructor, I'm just going to go ahead and initialize this to a new shader. And after I've gone ahead and initialized the mesh data, I'm going to initialize the shader. Shader.add, I have a vertex shader, so and I'm going to load that in with my resource loader class, so resource loader, if I can spell resource, <laughs> dot load shader. And I called my shader basic vertex dot vs, I'm pretty sure. Just going to double check. Basic vertex dot vs, yep. And I'm going to add a fragment shader. So add fragment shader. Could call it basic, oh, it's called basic fragment.fs and then after I add all the data I'm gonna take the shader I'm gonna compile it and that should make it ready to use so if I go in my render method and just do shader.bind this should use our shader program so let's see what happens and oh dear it appears that I have caused some issues so one moment Okay, I found the issue. First off, see where I'm doing gl git shader for the program? Yeah, that's bad. That should be gl git program. I'm just gonna control y because I'm sure you know how to change that to program. Other issue. See where I'm doing gl attach shader, shader program? Yeah, I got those parameters backwards. It should be program, comma, shader, even though it accepts it. So, yeah, make sure that's that way. And now if I run, our shader's working. It's got our triangle. It is indeed one quarter of the original size. And now it's turned to cyan. So, there you go. And just why not? Let's have a little bit more fun with this, because why not? We can. So, here's what I want to do. I want to set my color to essentially be what my position is. So I'm going to make my color my position, if that makes any sense. So, first off, in my vertex shader, I'm going to have to output something to the fragment shader. So I'm going to type the out keyword. That means it's outputting something. It's going to be, I'm going to output a vector 4 called color. So I'm going to create my color in the vertex shader. So I'll, I'll do it before. Why not? So color equals a vector 4. Now, I'm not just going to straight up do position 1.0, although that's going to be part of it. What I want to do is I want to use a uh, GLSL function called clamp. 
and essentially that'll make my position only between the values of whatever I pass in, in this case, 0 and 1. Because be that way I don't get some ridiculous out-of-range color, because colors in GLSL expect values between 0 and 1, so I'm just going to clamp my position to make sure everything is within that range. And yeah, so that's just my little extra fun. Let's see what happens. So if I run, I still get that. Probably because I didn't change the fragment shader, did I? No. Okay. I... <laughs> it's okay. So, here, I'm outputting that, but I'm going to take in a vector 4 called color, and I'm going to set my output just to the input color. And, yeah. So, let's go ahead and run. Ah, yes. So now you can sort of visualize the color. It's interpolating. I'm getting different colors based on what position, well, the particular pixel's in. So yeah, there you go. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.